the octave. Yeah. Not a lot of showing. I'm just bragging at this show. Yeah. I'm adopted. Yeah. Check this out. It's not weird, right? Because who was? There were many, right? There were. Maybe it is weird. All right. So that's cool. <laughs> Haven't I been through enough? Um, I always knew I was adopted. So smart. You gotta tell them. They're gonna figure it out. Like I always knew. I had to learn. Not everyone was adopted. That was <laughs> that was my awakening. And I will say this: being adopted is it comes in super handy when you're mad at your family. <laughs> That's like chef's kiss when you're just like, I'm not even related to these people. <laughs> like I'm from Texas, but I'm not all that Texan. <laughs> like I'm from Texas, but like I I can read and I wear shoes. You know what I mean? Like, but like, calm down on the racism. Anyway, I'm just like, <laughs> so even from when I was a kid, I was like, what am I doing here? And that's what happened. I, I, uh, I was home recently, I hung out with my brother, and my brother is, I love him, goes to strip bars all the time, also fun. But he's in denial about it. <laughs> like, he makes fun of other guys in there, but he's not one. <laughs> He's like, yeah, there's this one guy in there. What a loser. I see him in there every day. <laughs> and I just get to go, that's not my brother. I barely even know this guy. We just grew up in the same house. I, I, I have a friend who's not adopted. Can you, let's talk about that weirdo for a second. I was like, let me get this straight. You grew inside your mother. And then you came out through her most private part. And you were hungry. And you ate at her boob. Now you both just act like that never happened. <laughs> That's your life experience. <laughs> You're never at the dinner table, just pass the rolls. I was in you! Ah, I can't! I can't! Everybody just goes on like, no, I came out of a perfect stranger. The cord was cut, and I was like, good day, sir. I said good day. Cruised. I was like, I'm gonna find somebody I didn't come out of. <laughs> Try to make it work. Uh, it's weird to talk. I love that this show is happening. Have you guys been enjoying it? This whole thing? Because you adopted people, right? That's what it seems like. You brought people into your home, which is nice. I appreciate that my parents did that. Because um, because I can read. That's because of them. <laughs> which is really nice of them. Um, I, uh, uh, yeah, I was always knew that I was adopted, like, and you can't talk about it with normal people, right? I can't talk about it with civilians. Anytime I'm just like, oh, I'm adopted, people are like, mm. <laughs> Like I punched them. Oh, I'm like, what did I do? This cute little baby looking for a house. <laughs> what are you mad at me for? Um, so when I was little, I, so we were told we were adopted, and I totally got the concept. I knew that ladies came out of babies. <laughs> Babies came out of ladies, so I was like, got that. Wasn't great at science, but I knew that as a kid. And then I knew that like my mom couldn't have babies, and so some other lady had us. So I was like, got it. You know like little kids just know two facts, and they're like, I get it. <laughs> that was me at like eight. I was like, oh, I get it. So we're not farmers, but we eat salad and vegetables. So same thing. <laughs> I got it. Like, we don't make stereos, but we have one. I get it. I'm from the store. Like, there's like ladies out there having babies for everybody. And I didn't realize I had basically conceived of Handmaid's Tale. Until really, quite recently, I was like, oh, I mean, I didn't think, I mean, I assumed they liked their job as much as anybody, but I was just like, oh, there's. So, this is how I found out. The reality was that there was a woman, the neighbor down the street was pregnant, and I was like, she must be one of those baby having ladies. <laughs> so I was like, hey, Barbara, so you make babies for people? And she's like, keep walking. 
And what is happening? <laughs> and after she had the baby, we're visiting down the street, and she had the baby, she's breastfeeding. This, I know now. I mean, boobs were just not. If you're adopted, like, that is very weird. <laughs> but, like, that's like a McDonald's for you? A boob. Like, boobs were not on the menu at my house. We ate meatloaf, like normal people. Um, but she was, like, breastfeeding, and I was, I was like, why does she still have a baby? Like, it should go to its family. And I had so like, So that's what I told her. Because I was 10, and I knew what was up. And I was like, what the? <laughs> what's, what's happening? When does it go to its real parents? And she was like, you really need to talk to your mom. And that was the day I found out not everyone is adopted. And I was like, what? Like, I, I had been so fine with it. Like, they were like, you're adopted. And I was like, all right, I get it. Like, what am I I'm from the baby store. Babies are us or whatever. Like, a section of the back they don't let you in. I don't know. Like, I get it. We're from, and then I was like, oh. Just me and my brother Matt? Well, I've got some detective work to do. <laughs> I was like, there's some sleuthing in my future. I could not get over the fact that like there was some lady walking around that I had been inside of, and we're just, is she my teacher? Like, I just, it's weird. It's, Cause I'm, I'm old, so some of you are gonna get like, I was like, it felt like I was on candid camera all the time. <laughs> like, I, like any woman with kind of like dark hair, I was like, are you? Is it you? Or like, I love Smokey and the Bandit. I was like, Sally Field? Could it be? <laughs> it's kind of an amazing thing. And if you've adopted kids, like some, just like Kevin was talking about, not gonna care. My brother couldn't care less. He was like, we're adopted. Like that's the end of the sentence. And I'm like, we're adopted. It's the beginning of the sentence. And, but some who really don't care. But I, I was like, I got to know who I came out of. Like, this is, also, anytime I have disagreement with my family. Like, my family, all right, my dad's like, they're great. I love them, too. But, and <laughs> you know how sometimes you wish you were adopted? It's like that. But I really was. <laughs> so, so it was deeper. Um, so I, I was like, like I'm just not like, like my family went. They're very nice and calm. I'm speaking into a microphone right now, and that's what I do a lot. Like I wanted to be a ventriloquist. My mom, my mom was a teacher where I went to school. She's like rules. My dad is a hunter, Texan hunter dad. Does anybody have like an angry dad? <laughs> it's how they come, right? It's like, uh, my dad's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, wow, they're really angry. Like, that was like, we don't even answer questions out loud. <laughs> it's been trained up, yes. I had a, I had a mad dad, like, nice guy. Listen, thanks for the college education. But he was, uh, even when my dad's saying something nice, it sounds mad. That's how Texan he is. He's like, Merry Christmas! <laughs> but he's like holding cookies he just baked and presents like he needs it but he's just like who wants a sandwich I love you like oh my god why do I need to journal so much every time you speak <laughs> my dad's developed like resting dick voice but that's just <laughs> everything needs a hot bitch Nicest person in the world, like had a it was a very like Edith Archie situation oh. in our in our classic parents, right? And uh, so my mom would like my dad would come home where like uh, after school we're watching TV, my dad come home from work and just kind of bark at us like just like pick that up, and go to your room and clean that. And my mom would come behind him <laughs> and kind of reframe. <laughs> <laughs> What he just said. She would come through like, my dad's just glad to be home with you. He's looking forward to a nice dinner, hoping you're doing great in school. <laughs> you didn't say any of that. <laughs> she was like his press secretary. <laughs> 
<laughs> my mom was just like a dad apologist. <laughs> but he is, there's some that my dad has, uh, uh, my dad is an international expert in how they get you. <laughs> First of all, they're gonna get you. <laughs> and they'll tell you how. <laughs> that is how they get you. <laughs> That's his stamp on things. That's how they get you. Uh, so I was always fascinated by like, who are my other parents? Like, who, who do I like? I loved Van Halen, Diver Down. So I was like, is David Lee Roth my father? <laughs> Here's this, uh, here's an overview. Here's a teaser of where this story is. This is going. I found them. Oh. I found my family. So I know the answer to all these questions, but you don't. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mystery. Uh, I I found them and I and I got and I got some answers. But there's such a fun fantasy world as a, as an adoptee because you're just like anything you're into. Well, maybe they made me. <laughs> like it's just a fun like. Maybe my mom wanted to get backstage real bad and see Neil Diamond. I don't know. <laughs> Franklin and Rosie, get on board. I like that song, isn't it? I don't know, he travels a lot. <laughs> so I, I, I looked a little, and in college, uh, this is what happened in college. Um, when I was in college, the, the show, it, this is so odd to talk about too. I, I love how attentive you are. God bless you. <laughs> or just drunk, because they're like, oh, just a lot to pass. Um, we, so uh, it is weird to talk about this person. The person I'm going to talk about is Roseanne. But just pretend the last 10 years didn't happen. <laughs> that Roseanne. So, number one show, right? I'm in college, it's the 90s, number one show, just to just picture it. Madonna's Express Yourself is on, on all the radios. Some of you don't know what radios are. You look it up. <laughs> so, uh, if you know, you know. But our generation can say that too. And so, uh, so this is what had happened. Um, my, uh, so this was in the news. It was Roseanne, it came out in the news that Roseanne had given up a baby for adoption 19 years before. Here's the weird part, 19 years old. Oh. I'm a sophomore at the University of Texas at Austin. And I'm all, yeah, sure. It's, uh, uh, the mascot is like some kind of cow. <laughs> we're very proud of it. It's weird. It's like, the horns are very long and we enjoy that. So, anyway, I hear we're very good at some sports. Anyway, so I, 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 no, it is, you know, I, I um, uh, Does anyone look good in burnt orange, though? I don't know. I always had a problem. I always had a problem with that. Okay, so what was I even talking about? All right, no, Roseanne. All right, so <laughs> sophomore, 19, University of Texas at Austin. I'm walking to my dorm on this campus, and I and I have a school newspaper, and this school newspaper, which I, the Daily Texan, you know, you know that one. Um, and I'm reading it, and it said that, uh, it was a story about Roseanne. I loved her, loved that. I was obsessed with that show. It said uh, she had given up a daughter for adoption. She was 19 and attended the University of Texas at Austin. And I was like, Excuse me? Uh, oh, wow. Sophomore lives in a dorm in West Campus. And I was like, Roseanne was my baby. <laughs> Everything in my fucking life made sense. I was like, <laughs> my family's such drips, but I'm so funny. <laughs> Death to say on a comedy club stage. I can't believe I did it. Anyway, I appreciate you not going, not really. Anyway, <laughs> some of you thought it's a dangerous thing to say, but listen, I we let's just move past. So, but I was like, <laughs> holy, I was like, that's why I love John Goodman so much. <laughs> Roseanne is my birth mother. And then it said she gave up a, a in adoption, Utah, Jewish adoption agency in Utah, and I'm from Dallas. And I was like, God. Life. So I drank for about 20 years. Anyway, it's a long story short. It wasn't because of that. It was probably just because I, I am an alcoholic. I drank. 
I, I love it. A lot of you drink tonight. I don't, I, all your shirts are on. <laughs> I don't know how you do it, respect. <laughs> I drink so much I'm surprised there's any left. Like I drink, and I drink like, um, if, I, if I were drinking right now, I would make out with you. <laughs> and I don't mean like you or you, I mean, <laughs> that's where I get you. That is my, <laughs> that's my superpower when I drink. Even if, even if you're like, uh, like, well, I'm not attracted to you, or whoa, we're at work, doesn't matter. <laughs> I will punch you in the mouth with my mouth when I'm drinking. And so, <laughs> but this is what happened. So I, I sober up. I was really, a lot happened in those few sentences, we're, we're, we have to skip. So, if I, I sober up, I'm like, you know what, I wanna find my birth mother, like, find my, like, I was like, in my 40s, had my shit together, I'm in love, I'm happy, like, let's do, like, like I'm engaged, hello, you guys, it's on the wrong finger, but it's the last little way that falls off the other thing. But, oh, what, are you, yeah, that's right, superpower. Some, somebody loves me. <laughs> For now, right? <laughs> you gotta be really stuck about these things. But we're, <laughs> we have old love. We met old. We met in our 40s. So we don't have that young, like, ooh, is it gonna last? We're like, mm, who knows? <laughs> um, right? It's less I do and more you'll do, right? It's just real. It's more real. But old, old love is great. There's no cheating in old love. You're too tired. <laughs> old love cheating is like you you watch an episode of that show you're binging on your own. That's old love cheating. Old love cheating is when he comes home and he's like, you watch the succession finale? <laughs> and not before, like just fucking, like, ta -da! If somebody loves you like that, that is love. Like, you know, no more sucking in. That's my political statement. So this is what, I, why are we even talking about adoption? It's stupid. Um, wait, so here's what happened. So I finally, I was like, I did a search for my birth family. I was like, I'm finally gonna, gonna meet them. And uh, they, they called me and they said, we found her, but she didn't respond. So we have to call off the search. Can you believe the way I'm teasing you guys right now? That did happen. But then this happened. 23 and goddamn me. Yeah! Man, 20, you can't have a secret anymore in the world. Cause I, so I was at work and my friend was like, have you heard of 23 and me? It's incredible, like you spit and you find out how, what percentage of Neanderthal you are. <laughs> and I was like, I wanna know what percentage of Neanderthal, I mean, top 20%, is that good? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, but I also wanna catfish my birth mother. <laughs> kind of, kind of, I did. I just wanted a picture or something to see because like Kevin was talking about, when you've never encountered anyone with your DNA, just life is a mystery. You're just like, the, the same nose or the same laugh. Why wasn't it Roseanne? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> and so, I mean, it would have made a lot of sense. And so, uh, 23, sorry, I go on 23 and I'm like, yeah, here it comes, you get a ping. You have new DNA relatives. Always a sixth cousin. Yeah. <laughs> For two years. Like, we're all sixth cousins, I assume. <laughs> like, everyone's a sixth cousin. It's the word, I was like, useless, useless. You one day. I got a message that said, it looks like I'm your half-brother. And that's how I found my little brother, Jeremy. Really sweet. Actually, I have two half-brothers, which makes one whole brother. <laughs> and that makes me feel like that's a good joke, and I appreciate it. Thank you. But he's, he's great, so I actually have to wrap up soon, which is too bad. I'm falling in love with you. 
<laughs> but uh, Jeremy, so we we connected. He was like, "Hey, I'm your half brother," and then we connected. We then we texted, and we we're getting to know each other, and uh, and we met. And about a half hour into meeting him, so well, there were three kids, three different dads. So uh, Jeremy's black, and Josh, my other little brother, he he is uh, white. We're, there were two whites and a black, but they were they were like. Uh, they were like, we didn't know what you could be. You could have been anything. <laughs> they were like, and, and they told me, so I'm like a little bit into meeting Jeremy, and he said, he goes, I was always afraid I would accidentally have sex with you. <laughs> because what my birth mother did was in high school, she said, boys, I got to tell you something. <laughs> when they were in high school, I gave up a little girl for adoption, and I just need you to know, you have a sister out there, you guys. <laughs> And instead of them being like, wow, a sister, they were like, oh my God, don't fuck her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you better know. Like, they were, they were terrified. What great birth control. I mean, non-adopteds can do that. I mean, if you just don't want your kids having sex, just be like, you got a sieve out there. We don't know what they look like anyway. Enjoy, soft, enjoy sophomore year. <laughs> about Jeremy is he's good looking. He's good looking. Some of you were surprised and I don't appreciate it. <laughs> Here's how I know that he's good looking was exactly that is I would show people a picture of Jeremy and they, they do this, they go, oh, <laughs> he's really good looking. <laughs> What's with the O? <laughs> Yeah, we're related. <laughs> we're good looking. I'm a good looking black guy like him. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> it's a very offensive O. But I also found out, because uh, I met the whole family, I have a 100 year old grandmother. Bama, yeah. So I not only found out how much Neanderthal I am, I learned I'm unbreakable. I'm never gonna die. I can't afford that. So, it's kind of a weird thing to find out. When, you, when your savings is low, it's not what you wanna hear. That's where they get you. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she's she's wonderful. And she, I'm sorry, I'm telling you this because you're nice and I do it to go. But she, after we went, she started writing me checks every Christmas. <laughs> like she write me like a check for twenty dollars, like your grandma. And uh, we talked on. I did meet her, but before we met, we talked on the phone, and she said, "I got got to hold you one time." I know you you might cry. And she said, I kissed you, and I just prayed you find a good thing, and I said a prayer for you every year on your birthday, March 21st. <laughs> it's the 20th, but uh, <laughs> what are you do? Uh, so when I met my birth mother, I was a little mad at Kevin for having the same fucking story. She's Korean. <laughs> No, so I, so I met them. We went to Texas, uh, me and my two friend, and we went to uh, Ted, we met them, hugged them, and when my, this is how the stories go, when my birth mother hugged me, because I've always just wondered, like, why do I feel so weird in my family, and where do I belong? She hugged me, and she rocked me, and then she took a step back, and she said, you've grown. <laughs> Better than Roseanne, right? That's why I was like, smart ass is hereditary. I was home. Thank you so much, you guys.